This is an LED-based oscilloscope project that I've been developing here uh, really as a tool for my students to use. It's a partly designed oscilloscope with a driver circuitry for vertical and horizontal, but none of the vertical amplifier or, vert or horizontal amplifier or sweep circuits designed. So the idea is the students won't have to go through the tedium of laying out all the rows and column uh, and driver chips for the display, but can focus on the vertical and horizontal signal conditioning circuits. So a little bit of background on this. Uh, it turns out that many years ago, Forrest Mims had a really cool plan for an LED-based oscilloscope. If memory serves, it was a 10 by 10 LED array, and he used an LM3915 uh, dot bar display driver for the vertical, and then for the horizontal, basically used a decade counter. So digital sweep left to right, and then analog vertical control. It's a cool little project, and it's very simple to build given the, the chips that he selected for it. Uh, years later, I thought I'd take that same idea and modify it a bit, and I used a binary counter and then a, a 4 line to 16 line decoder to give a 10 by 16 display, but it was still a digital sweep and analog uh, vertical drive based on the LM3915. I wanted to do something like this uh, now in my new teaching role here at LC State, but I wanted to do something a little bigger, and I was dismayed to find out that the LM3915 is getting a little hard to find, at least in a, a through-hole version. So I thought, well, you know, if that part is reaching its end of life, um, it might not be supported anymore. Maybe it's time to homebrew an analog uh, drive circuit. And while I'm at it, maybe I could homebrew an analog drive for the horizontal, that way, instead of having a digital sweep that can only go from left to right, we can actually use an analog voltage to sweep back and forth any direction we want. And of course, by doing so, you have the ability to print out these Lissajous figures, which we're seeing right here. I'm just taking two sine waves, different frequency. It's about a 2 to 1 ratio. They're slightly off of that ideal 2 to 1 ratio, and we're getting this sort of classic pattern. Anyway, a uh, little description on the driver circuitry. It ends up being just a big voltage divider made of equal value resistors and a set of comparators that are comparing the input voltage for that axis against the tapped voltages coming off the divider. And then what that means is that the comparators in this array are going to have output states such that uh, some of them will be low and others will be high. And at that transition point between one comparator being low and another comparator being high, that difference in potential in the outputs is used to drive an opto-isolator, turning on a transistor, which then energizes the rows. The column drives work exactly the same way. I just have a different number of comparators and more opto-isolators and, of course, a larger voltage divider. But the analog voltage coming in here gets compared against the tapped voltages from that divider. And then once again, they're going to have a pair of adjacent comparators with different output states. And those differing states will drive the LED of an opto-isolator, turning on its transistor, and then allowing that column to sync current. So basically, the rows are sourcing current to the LEDs, and the columns are sinking current. And each LED is at the intersection of a row and column line. It's pretty straightforward. But the advantages here is I'm no longer tied to the ELM3915 and any availability issues we might have. You could literally expand this as far as you wanted to using very common off-the-shelf chips, which hopefully should be in production and supported for many years to come. Also, uh, you, if you wanted to, you could uh, use different values of resistors to have a nonlinear scale if that was your interest, for example, to do a logarithmic or decibel scale on the vertical. But in this case, I just went with equal value resistors in the divider to make a linear scale. And of course, using analog drive on the vertical and the horizontal lets me sweep back and forth left and right on the horizontal instead of merely going from left to right, as is the case with a digital sleep, uh, sweep. So not to criticize Forrest Mims' design, it was a fantastic design, especially for its economy of parts and simplicity of construction. But I wanted to put something together that was a little bit more expansive. And again, the purpose of this is to serve as the first half of a student project where the students would work on the vertical amplifier section and the horizontal amplifier and sweep circuits, developing the appropriate analog signals to sweep the LEDs back and forth, you know, or virtually, I should say, to get the patterns that you'd expect on a normal oscilloscope. So that is our basic uh, LED-based oscilloscope. This one happens to have 13 rows and 19 columns. 
and just before I sign off I'll change frequency here show you what a one-to-one -one frequency ratio looks like there we go so when you get the circle pattern it's 90 degrees out of phase when you get a straight line pattern it's either in phase or 180 degrees out of phase and there we go